There are a lot of tabletop music platforms out there that are amazing for beat making and even full on song creation. The Electrib 2 from Korg, however, takes things to a whole new level. Not only does it look amazing on and off stage, but in both cases, with both the Electrib 2 sampler and the Electrib 2 synth, you have machines that really can be your entire bit of accompaniment on your next album. Or run an entire set. Just you and Korg. In this series, I'm going to be going over with you, step by step, everything you need to know to get up and operational with the Korg Electra 2 synth and sampler. In this series, we're going to be going over both versions of Korg's red and blue monsters. We're going to learn not only how to build beats, melodies, and utilize effects, but we're also going to learn how to sample, edit samples, and build sounds and sets that will both awe and inspire. We're even going to go over how to integrate the Electribe 2 in with your computer, as well as how to use it with other devices. Before we begin, make sure you have updated your Electribe 2 to the newest OS upgrade. At this moment, version 2.0, which can be downloaded from Korg.com. Once finished, move on to the next tutorial, where we start to dig into two of the most amazing music machines on the planet. Electribe 2 Sampler, let me go ahead and show you how it's done. First, you're going to want to make sure you have a memory card that you've formatted with the Electribe 2 itself. To do this, press the menu button, then tab over to Data Utility and press Enter, which is also the menu button. Once in the Data Utility menu, locate the card format option from the Data Utility menu and press Enter again. Before you do this, keep in mind that anything on this card will be erased completely, so make sure nothing important is on it. Once your card is formatted, remove the card from the Electribe 2 and place the card in your computer's card reader. After the card appears on your machine, copy the system VSB file located in the Electribe System 202 file that you downloaded from Korg. Now, remove the card from your computer and place it back into your Electribe 2. Then, enter the Data Utility menu again and locate the Software Update option. When ready, press Enter and then Enter to confirm where needed. The update will take a minute or two, but once it's complete, you'll have some really cool new features that you'll definitely need to complete this course. Now that we're updated, let's jump in head first and start learning how to record a pattern of our own with the Electribe 2. There is a basic knob with no explanation. Even though it seems like an afterthought, this knob is responsible for a very important task on both Electribe 2s. Pattern selection. If I exit whatever menu I'm currently in by pressing the exit button, you'll start seeing named and even initialized patches available for play or selection. If I press the play button, I'll immediately hear what this pattern holds. If I turn the knob, I can turn to another pattern. Pattern changes do not immediately take place. The Electribe 2 will always play the full pattern, then begin playing the next selection. You'll notice that some patterns take longer to change than others. The Electribe 2s allow you to create patterns up to four measures long. And when an extended pattern like this is selected, it will run through the full four measures. If you want to begin a new pattern, I would suggest either scrolling to an open pattern marked with init pattern, or you can return to the data utility menu and choose the initialize pattern function to completely clear factory or user data. Once you have a pattern you'd like to work with, cleared and ready, let's move on to the next tutorial where we start choosing sounds to record our pattern. Of course, you can use a factory pattern as a foundation for patterns of your own. If this is what you'd like to do, if the selected pattern already has sounds you like, then hold down the shift button and press the six button over from the left on the bottom. This shortcut takes you straight to the clear sequence options. 
Once you're there, press the enter button to clear the part which is already selected. When you're ready to clear the rest of the parts within the sequence, simply use the part buttons to jump through each part within the pattern. Of course, you can always use the part erase mode, but this way you clean out the sequences before you start. But you keep the sounds that were made available with all of their settings intact with this pattern. Now, if you're starting from an initialized patch, you'll most likely be wanting to begin creating and tweaking one of the available sounds within the sample section or oscillator section, depending on your electribe. You'll notice when you select one of these sounds that it's pretty choppy and just sounds like you're triggering a raw sample, which to some degree you are. But when you enable the amp envelope generator, suddenly the sound you're working with opens up more and sounds more natural. This is because enabling the amp envelope generator makes the amp envelope active. Once you've selected a sample or oscillator tone, it's a good idea to visit this section immediately so you can begin bringing your tone to life and give it a place in your mix. I usually pan and sculpt as I create a sequence for the part. Once I like the way it sounds, I'll move on to the next part. Next, we're going to take a look at the filter section and learn how to do additional sculpting with frequency, in addition to amplitude. The filter section is a great and obvious next move for defining your sound. Using the three buttons below the filter knob, I can select from either low pass, high pass, or band pass. When building a bass line, I usually go for the low pass filter. This filter allows me to cut high frequencies using the filter knob. The more I turn to the left, the more high frequencies are cut. The more I turn the knob to the right, the more the filter opens up. It's through the act of cutting low frequencies that I make room in the mix for other parts. I can also record filter movements. When I press the record button and move a knob, you'll notice that the record button starts to blink. This means that I'm doing motion recording at the moment, and will end once the pattern that I'm working on completes playing through. After the blinking stops, you'll hear the filter motion recording play back, just like you recorded it yourself. If I raise the envelope generator intensity knob within the filter section, the amplitude envelope generator settings will start modulating the filter. Now the decay of the amplitude section opens the filter momentarily, and then as the decay settings ramp down, so does the filter. Adding in envelope generator modulation also helps you give your basses, kicks, and any other part extra definition and more character. However, if you really want to hear your parts modulated, then you really want to check out the modulation section, which we'll be jumping into in the next time. I'd like to mention that thinking of the Electribe 2 as a synthesizer of ideas, as well as a synthesizer of sound, would do you well in seeing full success with this device. Meaning, try to bring a melody or something you've had in your head to the device before you start. Let me show you what I mean. I have a basic melody that I've had in my head that I'll hum. Now, I'll tap tempo along to the beat of my idea. Then I'll enter trigger mode and select an idle part easily located by the basic simple sawtooth waveform. Most likely, this note is not going to match what I hear in my head. So I'll set this first synth part, which will end up being a bass 
to scale mode, which causes this part to follow the root note of the song. Then, set the root note for this pattern to what I hear in my head. Now, I'll just tap out a basic bass pattern in trigger mode. I'll hold down the keyboard button and select an empty part on the upper tier. For this second part, just to hear contrast between what I laid down before, I'll go up an octave using the octave buttons. Now I'll start playing the part just to test things out. I can start to get an idea for how many pattern links I might need. In my case, it looks like I'll need all four, or four measures. I'll set this by holding down the shift button and pressing the second button over on the top row of pads. What's cool is my one pattern length bass can continue to play at one pattern length while I adjust up to four, so that I can add on to what is already there over many pattern lengths. Once I have my melody dialed in with my higher synth part, I can clear my bass part that was just playing one note, and then build it out over four pattern lengths as well, or I can just leave it as is if I want to also. a kick drum. The next pad over is a snare. I'll just tap out a rhythm. Then on the next pass, I'll use the fifth pad over on the bottom for the hi-hat. drums are always there by default, so even though starting from a default pattern may be bleak, at least you can rely on knowing what sound will be where and how everything will be set up when starting from an initialized pattern. foundational pattern made for my song, but it needs to be saved. In the next tutorial, let's go over saving a pattern to the internal memory of an Electribe 2, as well as one of the hardest next steps for any song on any tool for creating music, adding on a chorus and breaking out of hearing that one loop over and over again. I'll hold down the shift button and press right. This method, as opposed to just pressing right, gives me the option of typing in a name for my pattern using the selection knob, and then choosing the location of where my newly named pattern will be. I'll choose a location and save. But notice, I'm staying on this pattern. Remember that I set the bass to scale mode, So now changing the root note of the pattern will change the bass's playback key. After hearing this pattern for a while, I start to imagine a new melody that will end up being either a chorus or another melodic section of my song. 
Now, I'll set a new melodic intention from my imagination. Okay, just like the last time, I'll select that other part from the last tutorial and play out my new melody just for practice in a higher octave. my pattern, one pattern number over from the original pattern we used to build the last one, which we saved at the beginning of this tutorial. In the next tutorial, let's hear these two patterns back to back, as well as learn a cool way to switch between two patterns. Once you've got a few patterns under your belt, you might find the pattern set function to be a very helpful tool. Select a pattern that you would like to have quick access to. While holding down the pattern set button, press the pad that you'd like this pattern to be assigned to. Another pattern that you'd like to have quick access to, hold down the pattern set button and press the pad you would like to assign this pattern to. Now when the pattern set button is illuminated, I can use these two pads to move between each of the last two patterns I made. It's important to note that the step buttons or octave buttons give you access to additional pattern set pad destinations. You can actually have up to 64 pattern set assignments. awesome for running a set and maintaining control at the same time. It realistically allows you to play DJ and cue MIDI creations you made on the fly.
probably noticed our current two patterns are sounding a little bland and are far from what one might consider finished. In the next tutorial, let's go over not only mixing, but also affecting and modulating our parts to get things bigger and more exciting. Over the last three tutorials, I built up a few patterns that work nicely together, but they are not in any way finished. We have the raw performance down. Now we need to produce and tweak them with modulation effects and actually mix what we have. I'll hold down the trigger button and select the first pad to the left on the bottom, the one we identified earlier as the usual default kick drum. Once selected, I'll start tweaking the level and pan knobs located in the upper section of the amp area. The amp settings do not actually have to be on for these parameters to work. I usually bump my kick up pretty high, but I'll leave just a little bit of headroom just in case I throw in some crazy dynamics or multi-velocity stutters in there. And I'll keep the kick drum dead center, making it the main thump. While in part mute, select the pad associated with the kick drum again. Now, I'm only hearing the kick drum, and if I want to add in my next part for mixing, I can just press another pad while in part mute mode and start bringing back in elements of my mix. Why don't we try this with the snare drum next? Let's unmute it and select it. Now that the snare is selected, I can adjust its levels to what seem right to my ear and pan it slightly over to the right, just so it's not dead center where the kick drum should be. Now, I can set the hi-hat where it needs to be. Now for the bass really like the pumper effect, which can be enabled with the IFX on button, or insert effects on, and then selected with the big insert effects knob. Using the edit knob, I can gradually or rapidly bring in the pumping sidechain effect and give my bass a little more groove. This is where the modulation knob can become very fun. The default modulation routing is the envelope generator to the filter, which is a mostly subtle effect and largely mimics what is taking place with the envelope generator intensity knob already mapped and present in the filter. But outside this routing, there are many, many more possibilities. In the next tutorial, let's take a look at a few different modulation routing for my bass and lead part. In the last tutorial, we began making that bass our own as well as establishing a mix in our pattern. Now let's jump back into the modulation section of the Electribe 2 and jump even further down the rabbit hole. Moving through the different routings can seem a little daunting at first as some of the abbreviations really don't tell you what's going on. Korg offers a really cool perimeter list that can be downloaded from their website and has short explanations for each routing. But until then, I have a few routings that I'd love to tell you about. Holding down the shift button while turning the modulation knob lets you sift through types of routings as opposed to each routing one at a time. Square wave and sawtooth, as well as sample and hold bass LFOs, are available to modulate the level of your part on the down or upbeat, and are great routed to the insert effects. or to the filter, or even to pan, and are very cool for adding texture and groove. You can ease the 
effect of the LFO, or you can go full blast and use the speed to vary the modulation and add some really nice textures as well. Random LFOs are cool for adding in subtle to drastic pitch fluctuations. This routing can be very effective on more melodic percussive parts like synths and toms, where you don't need the pitch to be exact. Even the basic envelope generator based modulations where the key press of your part activates the function in question can be a lot of fun. Modulation is extremely powerful in fleshing out a pattern, and we'll be covering it more as we continue. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Chaos Pad, or the Touchpad. The Touchpad is a tactile and highly intuitive method and interface for creating some amazing patterns in a way that might seem effortless to others, if you understand how it works. In the touch scale mode, you can trigger notes as you like by tapping lightly or rubbing the touchpad. This is a great way to beef up your patterns, parts quick, and doesn't require a lot of dexterity. with the touch scale mode, suddenly you can pull down the touchpad and allow rhythms to just flow. pattern, hold down the shift button and press the gate art button. There are tons of different patterns in there that can really change the feel of what you're currently playing, and add some rhythm that you might not have thought of. Moving more to the right increases the rate of the gate arp, wherein moving to the middle, to the far left, play lower resolutions of the gate arp's currently selected pattern. If I want, I can also deselect touch scale and use the pads to dictate the note value, and the touchpad in gate mode to control the rhythm flow. This can be a very fun way to not only generate new material quickly, but also a great way to have a fun jam session. that are triggered by the touchpad using the touch scale mode depend on the scale and key that the electrive are currently set to. To change the scale, hold down the shift button and press the touch scale button. Thank <laughs> you. 
also have the master effects setting for the touchpad, which is quite cool for applying effects that tend to either globally affect everything coming out of the Electribe, or only affect parts that have been assigned to the master effects bus. In the next tutorial, let's go over how the master effects works on the Electribe 2 and the touchpad. Electribe 2 has both a master effects section that affects everything on its bus, and in some cases, with some presets, the sequencer timing as well. Let's take a look at the effects and how they work. If I press the Master Effects button, I can use my finger to introduce the effect via touchpad. To change the current Master Effect, hold the Shift button and press the Master Effects button. Use the Value knob to move through the different Master Effects presets available. Some Master Effects, like the Sequence, Reverse Effect, actually affect the timing of the Electribe sequence as a whole and will work regardless of the MFX send assignments. Use the MFX hold button if you'd like to maintain an effect at a certain mix level after letting up on the touchpad. I can use the MFX hold button to introduce a reverb, then use the master effects mode for the touchpad to dial in the reverb mix as it occurs over all of the parts assigned to the master effects bus via the MFX send. Or I can use the MFX hold to introduce a stutter and never touch the pad at all. Insert effects are enabled for each part individually using the IFX button and are selected individually per part using the insert selection knob in the upper right hand corner of the unit. within the insert section controls the different parameters depending on the effect chosen. For example, the one delay effect, the edit knob controls the rate of the delay or speed in which the delayed notes play back. Let's take a look at the audio input found on both the sampler and the Electribe 2 synth and see how they work. If you have an Electribe 2 synth, then you're probably wondering what the audio in is for. If you're running an Electribe 2 sampler, then you already know. Before we get into the sampler-specific parts, I thought we'd go over what the two devices have in common with the input. When you hold down the shift button and scroll through the different oscillators on the synth, or different samples in the sampler, you'll eventually scroll to the audio input. With my current part selected as an audio in, I'll go over to the sequencer option and begin enabling steps within my pattern. My audio input is my Volca sample, which is also synced to my Electribe 2 synth. I'll play a pattern on my Volca sample, and notice you can't hear anything. But if I raise the edit knob in the oscillator or sample section, you'll start to hear little stabs of the Volca sample. But you'll notice the Volca sample is only being played back in the pattern of the sequence. I could even sculpt the attack and release of the gate if I enable the amplitude envelope, making whatever audio that is coming in sound like an entirely new sound or instrument.
so incredible is that your source also runs through the Electribe 2 filters. This is extremely cool if you have the Electribe 2 synth, as it has 16 different filter types. If I hold down the shift button and press the high pass button, or any of the other filter buttons, I can select between the different filter types for that filter. The acid filter setting is one that I really like, as you can seriously overdrive it and get some gnarly squelches out of it. Let's try it with the gate. Very cool. Of course, where the Electribe 2 sampler is concerned, the audio input becomes far more central. In the next tutorials, let's get specific to the Electribe 2 sampler and see how we can not only sample some sick sounds, but also how to edit them, too. If you've got the Electribe 2 sampler, you're in for a few additional treats, as this version of the Electribe 2 allows you to record external audio sources, as well as the ability to resample your own performances. To record external audio sources from a microphone or from another device, like a synth or another Electribe, you'll want to run a cable terminating into a 1 8 inch connection into the Electribe 2 sampler. Additionally, you'll want to go into the global options and enable the audio in through setting. Now that we're set up, I'll switch over to the sampler mode by holding down the shift button and pressing the record button. If I need to get out of this mode, I'll just press the exit button. When in the sampling mode, I can use the cursor buttons to move through the menu options. The sampling mode options allow you to adjust from sampling monophonically to stereo with both the left and right channel coming in through the 1 8 plug. The sampling source setting allows you to choose from either the audio input or the resampling mode where the Electribe samples itself internally. Finally, if I cursor over again, I get an indicator of how much internal memory I have for using with my Electribe sampler. To start the sample process, or recording, I'll press the play button. Once I've finished sampling what I want to record, I'll press the stop button. I'll press the right button and store the sample to a user location in the memory, which is a temporary location within the user memory. Meaning, if I turn off my Electribe, it will not exist when I turn my Electribe 2 back on. In the next tutorial, we're going to go over not only saving a sample so that you can use it again, but also how to edit samples. Once you've got a sample in the old memory bank or two, it's time to start editing. Now when you press the menu button, you'll see an additional edit menu. Within this menu, you'll find a very nice toolkit filled with everything you'd need to sculpt your new sample. You'll notice that it asks you to select a sample as soon as you enter in. If your desired sample is not listed, use the value knob to scroll to it. Then use the cursor button to move over to the next page, which is Sample Rename. In this menu, use the cursor buttons to jump over to the next decimal spaces and the value knob to enter in your desired name. Once finished, press the Enter button. In the sample menu, you also get access to the start and end times. If you have a really long gap of silence at the beginning of a sample, cursor over to a higher decimal space and use the value knob to move the start time forward. If you've got a lot of wasted space at the end of your sample, take back some valuable sampling time by cutting the end of the sample with the sample endpoint option. Again, move your cursor over and then scroll. If you try to edit by milliseconds, you'll be scrolling for a long time. If you're planning on looping your sample, use the loop start point to determine when the sample loop will start over from within the middle of the sample. This option is great for sample loops, never-ending voices, and samples you'd like to turn into a pad. 
you also get time slice. Use this option if you have a drum loop or percussive sample that has some form of rhythm built in. Each pad has now been assigned a slice of the loop. Using the threshold, you can fine tune the slices. The higher the threshold, the thicker the slices get. Highest being the whole loop. The lower you go, the tighter the slice. Once you've sampled your heart out, before you shut down, make sure you've exported all samples to a memory card or you will start your Electri back up to no samples at all. But if you do export, just like I'm suggesting, when you boot back up, all your samples will be there, just like you left them. Alright, we've got a beat on sampling, now let's get back to some songcraft. Next, let's take a look at... One very easy way to build a song out with the Electribe 2 that does not require the event recorder player is the song chain function. You can set up one pattern to automatically cue and play another pattern once it completes. You can even tell the Electribe how many times you want a pattern to play before it cues the next pattern. Before you can do any pattern chaining, you need to enable the chain mode function in the global menu first. Then, in page 14 of the Pattern menu, turn Chain to On with the Value section knob, and then continue to roll it until you hit the pattern of your choice. If you tab over to the next page and set the Chain to repeat 2, or any higher number, the current selected pattern will play that many times before it cues the next pattern. These mechanics are great as I can make one pattern that for all intents and purposes is my intro, verse, and so on. Once those four repetitions are complete, the Electribe cues up the next loop where I can mute, stutter, and build up and break down the next pattern, which might be my chorus or something along those lines. Pattern chaining is a powerful new function that gives you other song creation possibilities outside of the event recorder or a DAW. In the next tutorial, let's take a look at the Electribe 2's built-in event recorder and see how you record a full performance. When you've got a song complete and you want to record it in its entirety, you'll want to use the event recorder player. In this tutorial, let's take a look at how this works and how we finish up with the Electribe 2, if you're using it on its own. On a pattern that I'd like to start from in mute mode, I'll mute the parts that I do not want to start and get everything ready, like master effects, filter settings, and so on. Put Nama makeup. Then I'll press the menu button and cursor over to the event record play page and press enter. The very first page of the submenu is recorder. Let's go ahead and take a pass recording right now and see how it works. Once I hit enter, the transport will light up with the record and play button. When I press play, this will start the currently selected pattern. This is why I started getting things ready earlier. Now I'll just enter in parts with my mutes. Don't forget to tweak those knobs while recording, by the way. Unlike motion sequences, you are not limited to a pattern length of knob movements. While recording in the event recorder player, all movements are recorded. Occasionally I can drop in little glitches with the master effects. also a great time to use the step jump function to enter in some breaks and keep things interesting. If 
I feel like playing something, I can jump in. Once you've finished your work, press the stop button. A file name will be displayed at the bottom letting you know where your performance is being held. To play back your performance, go back to the event recorder player submenu and cursor over to the event player. Press the enter button and use the value edit knob to cursor down to the cork folder on your flashcard. Then the Electribe directory. Underneath the system folder, you'll find all of your performances there waiting for you. Press the enter button to select your performance, and then press enter again to hear it. Keep in mind, while your Electribe is playing back the fruits of your labor, it will not do anything else. So get ready to sit back and take a listen. Next, let's take a look at how to sync the Electribe 2 with some Volkas. If you've got any of the devices from the Korg Volca line laying around, or other vintage devices that have some form of control voltage input, you really need to utilize the sync in and out ports on the back of your Electribe 2 to synchronize and jam with other amazing devices. Let me show you what I mean. I'll run a 1 8 inch cord from my sync out on my Electribe to the sync in on my Volca sample. Now when I press the play button, you'll notice that the Volca sample does not immediately spring to life. But you can see that something is going on as the tempo knob is blinking in time with the Electribe 2. Now if I press play on the Volca sample, the pattern cued over on that end comes in in perfect timing. Now I can jam out along with my Electribe 2 and or a friend can bring a Volca over and join in on the jam session in perfect sync. If you want the Electribe to be synced to a Volca device with your Volca sync out going into your Electribe 2 sync in, go to the global options for your Electribe 2 and then set the clock mode from the default internal setting to auto. In auto mode, the Electribe is on the lookout for sync messages from MIDI, USB, and the 1 8 inch sync input. Note, for the event recorder and player to function, the clock mode must be set to internal. Make sure you set the setting back from auto to internal when you plan on using the event recorder and player. Okay, now that we're synced with Volcas, why don't we try syncing with the computer in the next tutorial? a song presently, you can always allow a computer to come in and give you a hand. In this tutorial, let's take a look at a few ways you can use your Electribe 2 with your computer. First off, if you're not really into using a computer at all, and this was part of the Electribe 2's charm in the first place, you're in luck. You can minimize your involvement with your computer and still get pro audio easily over to your favorite DAW or your favorite producer. One particular method of audio export that I really like is the export pattern set audio command. This is great because you can specify the order in which your song or set occurs through patterns. Select Ableton Live Set if you'd like to just open up an Ableton session and have all of your tracks laid out for you. Select WAV file only if you just want audio files to bring in to drop in your DAW. Once exported, you can locate the audio files in the flashcard after placing it in your PC's card reader and then browsing to Korg Electribe Pattern Set Project. If you'd like to integrate the Electribe 2 with your computer, there are several options as well. After you've installed the Korg USB MIDI driver from Korg's website, plug in the Electribe 2 to the USB port on your computer. Now let me show you how I use the Electribe 2 with my computer. Once inside of my DAW, in my case Ableton Live, 
I'll enable my elect drive within my MIDI preferences as well as send sync to my elect drive too. If I want to use the elect drive's knobs, I can enable remote as well so that I can use Ableton's own map function to map directly to knobs of my own choosing on my elect drive. In my elect drive 2's global menu, I'll make sure to enable auto mode in the clock mode menu. In this mode, Electribe 2 looks for sync input from multiple sources like USB, MIDI, or sync input. Now when I press play in Ableton, the Electribe 2 starts up in perfect timing along with my host clock's tempo. From here I can set some outputs going from my Electribe 2 to my audio interface and record bits at random as loops and input crazy MIDI into Ableton to soft sense or other MIDI instruments within my session. In the next tutorial, let's talk a little bit about step input mode. The Electribe 2 has a really cool step sequencer mode known as step input mode that allows you to make some really incredible synth patterns. Let's see how it works. If I choose a default synth part and then set this part to scale mode, and then set the root note of this pattern to A, this ensures that every starting note is automatically going to be input as an A, as opposed to me having to go back and input everything myself. I'm also going to set this part's polyphony to mono 1, which makes it monophonic and tells the envelope generator to not re-trigger on all additional notes when a key is held. Next, I'll press the sequencer button to enter into the step input mode and start tapping out a pattern for my synth part to play. Then I'll use the shift pad 12 shortcut and enter step edit. By holding down the shift button, I can sort by octave, allowing me to move to desired notes much faster. If I'm playing a polyphonic part, I can also stack notes up to four times and have a chord in my sequence as well. Adjust the gate time all the way up on certain steps to draw the step out and vary things up a bit. When you do this, the next step played does not re-trigger the envelope generator in modulation if it has the same note as the step prior. This allows you to get some really nice textured synth lines that closely emulate classic tabletop synths like the 303, 202, and so on. Once your synth is dialed in, simply press the exit button a couple of times or use a shift command shortcut to jump back into the Electribe 2 proper. The step input mode is a really fun and powerful way of creating melodies from your mind that your hands just aren't capable of playing. Spend time with this section of the Electribe 2 and I guarantee you, you'll have no problem getting some sick loops that will really move the dance floor. I hope you've enjoyed this trip through the functions and workflows we've gone over here for both the Electribe 2 synth and sampler as much as I have. Both units individually have an incredible amount of power and versatility and can stand strong as the centerpiece of a rig or can be valuable players alongside a slew of other instruments. I hope you'll continue to practice the shortcuts noted within this course as they can greatly speed up the Electribe 2 workflow and I encourage you to keep an eye on Korg.com for any announcements concerning future Electribe 2 updates, as Korg is well known for adding new features for devices like the Electribe 2 via internet download. And finally, don't forget to save those samples. It's really easy to forget, but nothing hurts worse than losing all your hard work. So export those samples, and see you next time.